Warco is a prototype for a first person shooter style game, you know, where you as the player go into a war zone. Um, but it's actually got no, no violent gameplay. So you play as a journalist rather than a soldier. So, you know, first person shooter genre, you pull up a rifle and this, you pull up a video camera. You know, if you pull up a pistol, you pull up an iPhone, you can film on. And it's really about war from the point of view of a journalist and the issues relating to that, you know, the voracious appetite we have for media coverage of war, the ethical issues about that, you know, do you help or do you observe, do you capture or do you participate? I mean, there's a huge range of issues. There's also a whole serious game side to our game, which is, you know, how do you train people to be able to go into war zones and, you know, and, and, and record them, you know, perhaps without the usual training that maybe you'd have if you were a journalist with the BBC or the ABC here. So all of these issues came together for us and then we thought, well, how do we make it fun? You know, can we create a game where it's fun? You play a journalist, you get off a plane, there's a war happening. And amazingly, we created this game and it was like a Northern African nation, fictitious place and there was a, a despot ruler and there were rebels attacking and NATO was supporting the rebel and all of it. And this was before what's recently happened in Libya happened. And it was incredible. The prototype came out just before um, the Gaddafi regime was being overthrown in Libya. And so people, we sent it, the prototype all over the world. The media coverage was incredible. People going, this is amazing. Here is a, a game that is actually about what's happening there and how you might document it. And also at a time when, you know, there were tragic stories of journalists getting killed. And, and uh, so, so anyway, that, that, that was the, the political and social kind of context of what we were trying to do. I mean, the practical side of it is, that it's fun, you know, you land, you can play this character, Jessie DeMarco, she's a woman, she's a, a VJ um, uh, journalist, she's young, not that experienced, she gets off a plane, there's a war going on. And what we've built is the first 15 minutes of what happens. And at the end of that, whatever you've filmed, you can then edit together and post. You know, so our idea, I guess, is that, um, you know, people will play the game and actually be able to edit together quite unique material from the game. So it's unique, but it fits within a, a very commercial genre of the first person shooter. Yeah, yeah we're thinking of little modules that, you know, could be about a tsunami or uh, you know, they could be any different issue that a journalist is sent into. And you know, I guess our, our logline for it is, you know, shoot the story, not your enemy. You know, so politically it really says, and I, it's a big question for me, because I, I love gaming, I love first person shooters, but you know, I mean, it's kind of the hours of running around just shooting people. There's no moral or ethical kind of value system. You just shoot people and they're a target to achieve your end goal. Whereas within, within Warco, there's a moment in the prototype where, you know, she runs into the, um, you know, the big uh, entryway to this airport. And there's three young um, soldiers, and they're obviously kind of working for this evil ruler, this despot ruler. And, um, but they're young recruits, you know, and, and they're going, we should run, we should run. And they run, and as they run outside, a car bomb goes off and they're blown up. And you see their bodies lying there. And she films it, or you can choose to film it within the game. And people who've played that say it's incredibly emotional. Like, you, you're actually filming animated characters in a game. In the, you know, and you've shot hundreds of thousands of people in other first person shooters. But something about filming it and seeing it happen and this body shaking for this young kid you've just spoken to, who was trying to escape, who's just been killed in this stupid this conflict, um, gives a human dimension to something that I haven't really felt or seen in games before. So we're trying to grapple with all of that too. I, I think it's a big question for gaming. You know, is gaming really driven ultimately the economic model of it by first person shooters which are about a visceral pleasure in running around with a gun shooting people? Um, and I don't say that with any judgement because I play them myself, but it's an observation that I think brings up so many questions that I guess we're trying to, you know, throw in the mix with, with Warco.
process for making Walker was quite unique because we brought together my company, which is a feature film company, Tony Manatti and Manatti Media, which is a media company. He's a journalist and a war correspondent. And Defiant Development, which is a game company based in Brisbane. So the three of us came together to make the game. And all of us said, can we make something that is better than any of, the, of us would individually do? So Defiance made games before, but they've never had a filmmaker come in and work on the cut scenes and the titles and the narrative, you know, and then you've got a journalist who's bringing in authenticity. And so I think the process was driven really well by, you know, Tony Manatti, Morgan Jafford and myself as these three principals, you know, collaborating. Uh, and then the next step was to prototype it. So that's a costly business. I mean, the prototype cost about $250,000. So, you know, it's not a cheap venture, which we had to raise. And at that point, people were saying, well, you know, why would people want to play this? People just want to shoot. But, you know, I had a lot of objections. We had to prove that this was interesting, that this was fun, and that you'd want to play it. Um, and so that was the, the process of over six months actually building the game, you know, scripting it, you know. I mean, I loved it. You know, as a filmmaker, it was incredible, you know, to be able to work within a gaming world and, and move characters around and, you know, it's kind of, you know, you can really see something heading towards the future of even cinema, you know, with animation and, you know, the whole game-based animation like Machinima is fascinating to, to see the, the progress in that area. Um, but then uh, the, uh, the next phase was actually seeing if there was interest in it. And then we spent about two months traveling the world, showing it to people, showing, you know, we got fantastic responses from the BBC, Reuters, the New York Times, Al Jazeera, you know, um, Le Monde. I mean, the, the, the media commentary about it globally was incredible. And uh, Morgan Jaffet went to a lot of the gaming conferences in the world to see what people thought. And, and coming out of that, we arrived at a conclusion about the next step and where to take the game. And it was different from what we imagined we would do, um, but it came from like market research, which is the great thing about a prototype. Prototype was built as a, as a proof of concept, really, to show people what it will look like, what the, what will, you know, it look like when you're running along and you bring up a camera instead of a gun. What will it look like through the lens? Can you zoom, can you, you know, and recording. And then we kind of had ideas about limitations. Is it like, you know, in first person shooters, you have a rifle, but limited number of bullets, you know, you bring up your camera, is there limited battery life? Is there limited space on the memory stick? I mean, it's, all of this stuff was, explored in the prototype to to test it out really and uh, you know obviously it's a much cheaper option than to build a you know ten million dollar game and then discover no one wants it you know you build a two hundred fifty thousand dollar prototype and you see what people want what was exciting about that is I mean we discovered what people want you know was different to what we thought you know we thought it would be a boxed game and you know people would but what we're doing now is we're commercialising it as a micro game that people play, you know, maybe $3.99, um, you know, cheap, they play it and they run through this first 15 minutes of the game recording video stuff and cut it and upload it. And the competition is real world. So real judges from CNN, BBC, New York Times, like real judges who will say who's the best, who got the best story out of this game and then real prizes. So it's kind of a different model. It's again, that's innovation, a kind of unique, real world, competitive, you know, um, space within a game. Uh, and we wouldn't have known that if we hadn't built the prototype and tested it in the market. We're financing that at the moment. So by the end of the year, the first module of the game should be available commercially and the first round of competitions. So, you know, the first kind of, I think we'll have monthly prizes and, um, you know, and just see what people do. I mean, you know, game, game um, players are so, you know, perverse in their gameplay. I mean, I, I know, I remember there was a great example of one of the early arcade driving games, you know, because the designers knew that game players are perverse. If, if, it, if you tell them you've got to go this way around the circuit, there'll always be one in 10 game player who'll turn around and go the other way. So they rewarded them by actually having a, a side little thing you could drive off and drive around. And I think with this, it's similar, you know, I imagine people will play Warco and we'll be thinking they'll be cutting serious journalistic pieces, but people will probably cut nature docos out of the game or, you know, I think it'll be fun to see what the user generated content is that comes out of, out of Warco. Oh, it's a few years, <laughs> you know, since we had the original idea. 
The practical physical time once you get the money is about a six month cycle, I think, for each module. But uh, look, you know, as everything I've done, you know, the actual shoot of a feature is short. It's the years that it takes to get the film made. You know, Balibo, seven years of my life. The shoot was eight weeks long. So only eight weeks of that seven years I was on set. So, you know, that, that's similar, actually. I think it's, um, you know, inevitable you spend a lot of time developing and financing. How do you direct scenes in a game or the whole issue, do you have cut scenes or don't you have cut scenes? Um, you know, we put this incredible title sequence on the uh, prototype, which is like a title sequence from, you know, the film Black Hawk Down, which is like a feature film title sequence. We opted not to have uh, typical cut scenes in it. Um, so it was more about, you know, the story experience of it, you know, delivering the beats that you might expect if you were watching a film. You know, there's no point just wandering around a world for hours and nothing happening. Uh, the, the extension of that too was that the characters had to be really detailed, and that's a similar concept to how, how a film would be, like Jesse DeMarco, who is this character? What's her background? Um, I brought in the actress Sibylla Budd, who I'd worked with on the film The Bank, and she voiced the character. And we listened to a whole heap of journalists and hearing the voices and their inflections brought in an amazing array of uh, actors to play all the characters in the film too. An incredible Iraqi actor from Baghdad who's come to Australia um, for political, re you know, asylum reasons. And, you know, he provided uh, a great character kind of, um, you know, basis for, for what would otherwise just be characters running around. You know, to have proper actors playing them, directed by me in a sound studio, um, gave it a kind of another texture, another level of detail. You know, but I, I guess directors are not so necessary a term, I think, in gaming. You know, who the director is, you know, like I think there was the game designer in Morgan or the um, visual designer who might have come up with some of the characters, what they look like. I mean, I, I think the collaborative nature of it means that it's less about a director being sent out on set, you know, to try and get through the day and shoot what's meant to be shot and more about the director harnessing all of the different creative um, players uh, to work towards a collective vision, um, but without kind of dismissing the input individually from all of the, the creative players. So that, that's kind of different, I think. It's less singular. I think gaming lends itself even more to, to the grand uh, ambition to be a collaborative work.